Hey y'all, to start the build out of my new garage workshop, I need some place to act as a work surface, but more importantly, some place to store all these tools. So I'm going to be building a workbench cabinet with 10 drawers. The floor is pretty uneven in this back part of the garage, so I need to build a level base first. After using a level to find the slope, I mark the board and trim the bottom of it to that estimate level needed for a flat level top. With the side done, I started on the back. Setting a board on the floor, the board itself was level, but I found a gap between the middle of the board and the floor was about the same as the gap on the far right between the tops of the two boards. So I took that gap and I scribed it across the entire bottom of the board, marking against the floor, and then I marked that scribe with a pencil to see it so I could trim that board down also on the bandsaw. I then repeated that same process on the other side. The front ended up being pretty close to perfect as is, just needed a little trimming. Simple construction to attach the boards, just pre-drilled and screwed in place. I then added a middle stretcher for the cabinets to sit on, and it all ended up creating a nice level base. To build the actual cabinets, I had the big box store cut this 3 quarter inch plywood in half so the cabinets will be 24 inches wide. But I still freehand cut the sides to size as well as the stretchers for the build. With all the pieces cut and a lot of pocket holes drilled later, it was time for assembly. I bought these corner clamps after the last cabinet I built as I had a real difficult time getting these tops and bottom pieces flush. These clamps really helped a lot with that. Though they took a little bit longer to work with, it was worth it for these crucial areas like getting the tops and bottom stretchers aligned with the sides. After attaching two tops and two bottoms, I attached the two back pieces and I tried doing it without the clamps to see if it speeded up, but I think I spent just as much time just manually trying to get them in place. With all six on, it was time to attach the second side and put it in place. For this build, we're just doing full pieces on the two sides as these will get connected together and put into the wall for stability. The cabinets then got attached to each other and to the base. Now to start on the drawers. After cutting the pieces, I drilled the pocket holes and then drilled the pocket holes a second time because I had set them wrong the first time. I tried cutting a corner here again and only clamped on the base side and you can see how the screw pushed the board away and then recovered. So after this, I went back to using clamps on both boards. Now to test the fit with the drawer slides, it's tight, but it still moves, so that would be perfect once done. Then it was time to build the other nine drawers. For each side, I built four small drawers and one deep drawer based on the kind of tools I have and what I need to store. Once done, I cut out 10 bases of quarter inch plywood to attach to them all. I used a simple process of gluing and then screwing them in. I used clamps in the two corners to keep it in place while I was doing the work and then just drilled those two corners in at the end. With all of them built, it was now time to install the drawer slides. Lots of tutorials online, and I've done a few of these myself, but it really is simplest to start from the bottom and just use spacer blocks to build up to the top of the cabinet. Just take your time measuring out before you start to understand where you need each one to end and how big your spacer needs to be. That way your top drawer ends up exactly where you want it to be. With all 10 in, it's time to start on the face plates, and I'm using the same exact method. Start from the bottom with spacers and work your way back up to the top. Part of why I went with this open top was to help with the ease of build here. I have full access to the inside of these top drawers to help attach these face plates. 
Now for the handles, I went ahead and built a jig to drill the holes in the drawers. And then I went over and built some walnut down to size. I then did a lot of block planing to get the chamfers I was looking for and the actual feel I wanted on each of the handles. Now for final assembly and finishing. Remember these cabinets were freehand cut so I needed to plane down the top as some of the areas were a little off just to make sure I had a nice flat surface for the tabletop. Then the base cabinet got its first coat of a water-based poly I'm using to finish all my shop furniture. To attach the handles, I already pre-drilled the handle and inserted screws in the drawer, so I matched the screw tips to the handle, clamped in place, and then drove in the screws. I then inserted the drawer and added a coat of poly to it. Once all 10 drawers were done, I cut spacer blocks and screwed through the cabinet through the spacer blocks and then into the studs to help stiffen up the structure. Since the cabinet's not sitting directly up against the wall due to the garage floor curves, it took all the wiggle out of it. Now for the top, I cut down two sheets of the three quarter inch plywood and glued and screwed them together. I then planed them flat on the sides so the trim would sit evenly on it. With some glue and brad nails, the trim went on the front three sides. After confirming the drawer's work, I chamfered and finished the tabletop. To install it, I actually moved it about two inches forward from the back wall, uh, being that this top is 24 inches wide, the same as the cabinets, and I wanted to make sure there was overhang for clamps, as well as things falling off wouldn't land on the handles. To cover the back section, I built a shelf to sit here. Why? Good question. My dad and grandfather both had shelves on the back of their work benches, so why not just keep that family style going? I pocket holed the two visible boards together, then attached a stretcher along the wall, screwing it into the studs. The shelf then sits on the stretcher and the top of the workbench, being screwed into the stretcher a few times just to make sure it doesn't move. And with that, the first build of the new garage workshop is done. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next build. Thanks!